Uh, namaste, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to really thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present on issue that is uh, very close to my heart. And uh, for the purpose of today's presentation on the domain of youth and culture, uh, I have uh, worked on uh, a small topic that is adverse uh, and positive childhood experiences a matter to Buddhism. I hope uh, I will be able to do justice uh, uh, in, 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 during this uh, uh, presentation. So moving ahead, I would like to first uh, uh, pose a small uh, question. Uh, how many of us are there um, who don't wish for happiness, good health, or well-being per se? And uh, how many of us are there who prays, uh, may whatever I wish never come true. So therefore, I presume uh, that uh, uh, it's not, it is undeniable that uh, there's no one uh, as such uh, who don't wish for happiness or good health or well-being and uh, our prayers being answered. Uh, within my close observation, um, in my limited observation, uh, I really feel that we are li really living in a challenging uh, times. Uh, for instance, uh, gone were the days uh, that to, we used to eat food together. Um, lucky are the ones um, who could uh, talk about uh, or give thanks to the mother nature for providing all the amenit amenities for survival. Uh, However, the time has changed, uh, although um, we would be still eating uh, food together if you are lucky enough, but how many of us, us of, uh, have the real time to uh, thank the mother nature? Rather, uh, we have time to concentrate on what is the share being uh, served in, in our plate and uh, use of iPhones because uh, uh, U-phones have not been discovered yet um, and uh, in no minute uh, our uh, snapshots will be in the social media and we are also living in a time where competition is religiously followed uh, fishing for fame pride and praises as well as credentials and uh, definitely if not more um, the disharmony in the family that is supposedly the unit of our society and definitely uh, broken relationships and uh, love, uh, more of the distractions and even more the games uh, as I see my children uh, fully engaging into the, uh, you know, the available gadgets and applications and definitely why not. I'm not crossing the road but the road is definitely crossing my uh, forest. So definitely these, all these things are, are adding uh, to the stresses, if not that we are actually asking for it. So one of the adversities that I would like to stress today is uh, pertaining to adverse uh, childhood experiences, which are potential traumatic experiences that our children uh, would uh, experience within the first 18 years of their uh, life. And globally, it is uh, said that the prevalence of adverse childhood experiences are now stands at 57%, which is uh, a big number. And uh, it ranges from 33 to 88% across the countries around the uh, globe. And let us not forget that children and youth are the future are the assets of any nation states. Now, when I say about the adverse childhood experiences, um, it pertains with abuse related to physical, emotional, and sexual abuses, uh, neglect that pertains with physical and emotional neglect, and household uh, members, um, which are related with mental illnesses, um, incarcerated uh, relative, uh, mother treated uh, violently, substance abuse, and of course, uh, divorce. 
So these are some of the uh, adverse childhood experiences uh, that our children and youth uh, can experience in the first 18 years of their life. Now, numerous studies um, have supported uh, that adverse uh, childhood experiences have a strong influence um, on behavior, for instance, uh, lack of physical activity and the consequences aftermath. Uh, substance abuse, including smoking and alcohol, uh, and of course, they miss work. Besides, ACE have a strong influence on the physical uh, health. Uh, now, you can see here that uh, obesity, diabetes, uh, stroke, lung diseases, heart diseases, cancer, and STIs are, have a very strong in, uh, relationship with the adverse childhood experiences. And uh, on the mental health, uh, that is depression, suicidal attempts and completion. And certainly the life potentials, um, but the relationship between adverse childhood experiences and uh, uh, life potentials. So the adverse childhood experiences uh, have a, a lasting um, effects on uh, um, the negative health outcomes, uh, and well-being. In fact, in this uh, uh, graph, you could see that there is uh, an increasing trend of uh, uh, negative health conditions and well-being uh, along with the, the cumulative uh, adverse childhood experiences. Next. Next. And we understand that uh, positive emotions uh, are certainly uh, positively related with the, um, the self-report of health, uh, healthy health conditions. Uh, next. On the other hand, um, positive childhood experiences uh, pertains with feeling the ability to talk uh, uh, with the family members about the feeling. Next. You can keep on pressing, I think. Um, feeling uh, your family members stood by you during the difficult times feeling safe and protected by an adult uh, in your family uh, at, at home and feeling a sense of uh, belonging to the community, such as in, in the uh, school, feeling supported by friends. And at least there are two adults uh, outside of the parent whom we can uh, count on to during difficult time. And of course, enjoying participation in the community and traditions. These are supposedly the positive uh, childhood experiences uh, which are providable. Uh, next. Now studies have um, uh, indicated, uh, in fact they have found that positive childhood experiences uh, show a dose response relationship just like that of uh, adverse childhood experiences with the adult mental and relational uh, health. So if you look at this uh, illustration we can see that uh, compared to zero to two uh, positive childhood experiences, the odds of depression or report of poor mental health conditions uh, uh, decreases to that of 72%. It, it actually lowers um, the, the odds of uh, depression and mental health. Next. So therefore, protective childhood experiences is certainly a very important uh, protective uh, uh, factor. Uh, which is providable. Next. Now, pertaining uh, to the spirituality, the uh, Buddhism, as I uh, mentioned before, because I, I'll be talking a little bit on, on that, uh, studies on the, uh, the survivor of child abuse, sexual abuse, uh, intimate partner and community violence and war have indicated that the application of spirituality as well as uh, positive religious coping have been strongly associated uh, with decreased psychological uh, distress. And uh, I will be confident enough to say that uh, India is uh, such a, um, uh, in, in fact, the most uh, spiritual and religious uh, country, um, owing to the fact that, uh, you know, seemingly there are many gods and goddesses uh, thriving in, in India. And I see this one as a richness that India have never failed to amaze uh, and teach the world uh, for instance uh, uh, having the mindset that fits into stuff like uh, a big elephant uh, right on a small uh, mouse 
And uh, I think this is a big investment that uh, India can bank on, especially if you would like it to actualize it, uh, the view of an interdependence uh, of this world. And on the other hand, Buddhism, which was discovered some 2,500 years ago in India itself, uh, is promoting the way of living uh, that concerns it with morality, uh, mental concentrations, cultivation and application of uh, wisdom. And I will risk to say here that uh, the world really don't need much of intelligent people, I think, because enough has been done to this world. What the world directly needs as of now is people with wisdom. Next. So the other issues uh, is that uh, Buddhism teachings have uh, do promote uh, the sacred outlook uh, towards everything. In fact, the sacrosanctity outlook of uh, what the Buddhist Buddhism teaches is definitely uh, promoting the view of interdependence. And in reality, if we really think, what is there that is uh, existing independent? Nothing exists independently. Actually, everything exists interdependently. Next. Uh, in conjunction to this, uh, one might have all the glorified uh, uh, purposes in uh, life, but certainly we all have a one common purpose in life is to live our life. Uh, many of us really don't really know how to live our life. Sometimes we give our life to uh, substance abuse. Sometimes we give our life to uh, messing up with others' life. Uh, and uh, what not actually next it also tr uh, teaches the truth the truth that nothing lasts forever and we blatantly and blindly believe that everything we surrounds us are actually permanent right we we go for a shopping thinking that we will live forever it also um, teaches us the philosophy that uh, uh, we are the maker of our own happiness as much as we are the maker of, of, of our own suffering. Just like in the science that believes in, in the causal effect relationship, the teachings of Buddhism also uh, talks uh, believes in the law of cause conditions and effect. And therefore, certainly this religion has to be a mind science. In fact, not even a religion. It's a mind science. Next. And it reminds every one of us, the law of karma. Uh, people will remember and people will forget, but karma will certainly not forget us. Next. So therefore, learning these realities could potentially improve the resilience of the children in terms of healthier social relationships, productivity, and sense of responsibility. Next. Uh, besides, the teachings of Buddhism also uh, promotes going in is the only way out. Uh, that is basically looking into ourselves, in, inner engineer ourselves, and bring out self-transformation. Next. So one such is uh, heavily discussed in, in, in Buddhism is a mindful uh, practice, which enriches the mind with skillful methods and learning to deal with whatever life and death throws at us. Next. So the purpose of mindfulness is to help individuals perceive reality more clearly, better, and enjoy more fulfilling life. Next. Now, if we give a little time to ourselves and deeply contemplate, most of the problems that the world faces today are a result of lack of mindfulness and how many of us are really mindful about our action our speech and our uh, views next so in bhutan mindfulness education is recognized as an integral part of the Bhutanese education system that is basically to learn to be more aware of one's action of body speech and mind next even if we don't actualize or self-aware at this one single go, 
just a matter of just seat itself has an enormous benefit. Uh, it has a benefit of, or it prevents us from going out to the forest and chop down all the straight uh, trees, or it prevents us from going outside and mess around with somebody whom we don't like it. So just seat has that, that much of benefit. Next. Besides, the adoption of life skills in the mainstream educa uh, Bhutanese education system has significantly played a greater role in the prevention of violence in children, substance abuse, and promotion of intelligence. Next. And when I talk about, uh, next, and when I talk about uh, uh, life skills, next, uh, I mean, we're talking about thinking skills, we're talking about social skills, and we're talking about emotional skills. So given the fact that life skills has a positive impact, it merits that life skill education has to be continued to facilitate, facilitate in facing the challenges that the life throws at us. Next. So finally, um, in conclusion, I, I want to stress here that positive childhood experiences are very much providable as much as adverse childhood experiences are avertible, uh, it is counterable, and it is preventable. The only way out is going inside. So I think it merits to give time to yourself and to transform ourselves. Next. Being good is as easy as being bad is difficult. The reality is that goodness are always there with us. It is innate with us. Next. Self-awareness, the mother of all the life skills. I think it deserves to exercise it more practically. Next. Let's not forget that uh, we are the creator of our own happiness and as is our own suffering. Next. Let's teach our uh, young child, our youth, how to be humble because we know that humility and conviction are the two healthy wins for a successful person. Next. And studies have shown that certain degrees of adversities helps in building the resilience, in building the toughness that individual of, of wanted it. So therefore, healthy and happy childhood starts now. Next. And let's not forget the adage that it takes a village to raise a child. And this continues to, to be relevant to this day, uh, day and age. Next. So, this is my final slide. As I have always been mentioning in most of my presentation, uh, the take back home message is that we all have buddhi, uh, the capacity to retain concept, intelligence, or reasoning power, one may say it. Let's use buddhi to become Buddha, or next, uh, let's not use buddhi to become uh, Buddha. So therefore, the choice is with us. I hope uh, whatever presentation I have made so far, uh, next. Uh, maybe of small remind to all of us. Thank you very much. Just one question, uh, Dr. Nedu. Uh, I really enjoyed your presentation. I, I just want to know because, you know, the importance of life skill education is very, very crucial, you know, for uh, young children and youth. Uh, and I am very surprised to hear that, uh, you know, Bhutan government has integrated it as a part of the school curriculum itself. Just like to know when this was done and how long, uh, you know, uh, how long this has been integrated, life skill as a part of the school curriculum. And uh, listening from you that it has had an impact, uh, you know, very positive impact and i i fail to understand why our educational system is not you know adapting this crucial uh, you know aspect life skills which were which was a part of our educational system once upon a time in in, in you know called moral science but slowly it has been phased out uh, thank you professor vasanti um although i will definitely not claim that uh, bhutan has championed on life skill application uh, but certainly uh, as early as 2008, uh, when this life skill education was first introduced in, in, in 
uh, uh, Bhutan. I was actually there um, uh, in, in drafting all this uh, um, and, and training of all these life skills uh, in conjunction with the uh, experts from the World Health Organization based in New Delhi. So I'm happy that these life skills uh, uh, has been integrated in the Bhutanese education system. And uh, definitely things are moving uh, on a positive direction. And I do not know that uh, how, whether it is 100% successful or not, because Bhutan use now, unlike in India, the research is still in an infant stage. And we need to do a lot of research uh, on this. But few of the uh, researches done based on life skills have proven that there is a positive impact. And I definitely foresee there should be a positive in impact. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much, Professor Dave, and all the members here for giving uh, the opportunity. Uh, much appreciated. So I'll take a leave then.